My name is Will Reynolds. Uh, I do SEO. And um, I got a whole lot of stuff I want to get through. So I'm going to kind of just get right into it. Um, there's a lot of changes going on in SEO right now, um, more so than I've seen in a long time. So I really wanted to go through kind of what those changes are that I'm seeing, why I think they're important, and the tools and strategies you'll need to make sure that you don't get your, your butt kicked in 2011. All right? So who here has seen me either last year here in Vegas or in New York? Cool. All right. Um, so there's a lot of newbies. Um, I love it when people say, oh, I thought you were going to do the same presentation as last year, so I didn't show up. And I'm like, wrong. I never do the same presentation twice. So um, with that said, there's a couple of easy rules. The only rule I have is interrupt me whenever you want. Ask a question. Um, if we start running short on time, I'm actually doing uh, a Q&A uh, in one of the suites that I'll get the, uh, I'll get the, the suite number later for like a half hour, an hour, where people can just come up and ask me questions at, at, at will, bring up your site, whatever it is. So if we run out of time today for Q&A, um, that's probably the best way for us to keep, to keep moving. All right, so instead of you guys trying to write down and type in every single URL that I start throwing out at you, because I know I do it relatively fast, if you just go to this URL, um, it's pickwillsbrain.com, that's will with one L. If you put in two, you're gonna follow the wrong guy. Um, pound ASW11, every link that I'm talking about here is right there for you. So you don't need to try to write them all down and ask me to stop or slow down so you can write things down. So the only thing you should have to write down is this one. Um, if you have any other questions, just let me know uh, about any of the links that I talk about. So, anybody know who this guy is? Somebody's got to know who this is. No? All right. Damn, you guys are bad. Either you're hungover or this is bad. It's 11.30. Like, you guys should be over that by now. I know I am. So, it's Sam Cooke. Um, he sings a song, you know, A Change is Gonna Come. I was born by the river in a little tent. Right? Yeah, I know you guys aren't here to see me, hear me sing. But, um, you know, there's a lot of changes that are coming. And I thought it was very fitting when one of the guys in our office uh, the other day requested for me to put on some Sam Cooke. The dude's like 22. He's requesting Sam Cooke. I'm like, I'm glad I hired you. You're a good dude. So there's a couple things that are happening that I see that are making big sweeping changes I think you guys should be prepared for. Universal search at Google has ramped up like crazy. Um, so therefore, you should be prepared for what they're doing. I'm going to show you what they're doing and how to combat it. The brand bias in Google has just gotten significantly worse um, if you're not a large brand. So who in here is, uh, is on the affiliate side? Most, okay, wow, okay. And uh, publishers, uh, I'm not publishers, um, like the, the, the client side, the, the, the business owner side, like the marketers. Okay, cool. Um, I'm gonna try to give both of you guys something, but this, is, this presentation skewed a little bit more towards the affiliates. Um, and then lastly is Google's renewed focus on spam this year. Uh, Matt Cutts uh, actually has come out and said numerous times that they've kind of been slacking for the last year or so. Many of you have probably gotten away with some things that you were surprised still worked. And supposedly, um, they are working on a lot of things in 2011 to overcome that. And I'm going to show you guys some of the webmaster tools that are showing up that are going to alert you when you're doing things you shouldn't be doing. So. I have never seen this much change in 13 years of doing SEO. And I'm not one of those people that did like web design for like seven years and then SEO for six and say I've been doing SEO for 13 years. I was hired as an SEO as my first job out of college when I was 22 and I've been doing it ever since and I'm now 34. I know, I'm old. So, um, so that's all I've done. So I've seen a lot of changes. I've seen a lot of things come and go. I've seen things people get really hyped up on like caffeine and stupid things that I knew from the beginning weren't really gonna affect us that much. Um, for the vast majority of us, but I feel that a lot of the changes that are happening now are going to stick. So my goal today is just to make sure that you guys are armed with the insights, strategies, and tools to figure out what's coming and how the heck can you actually compete. So let's go ahead and get started. 20% of all queries, according to Google, um, are locally based. I would have never thought that that many people were searching for things based on location. What's also much more important is that Marissa Mayer, their VP of product, one of their longest tenured Googlers, one of their best known Googlers, has been moved over to manage product, um, to manage pro the product side for local and mobile. So when a company starts to move some of their top talent, or basically their top talent, 
into an area, that is a very strong signal that this is probably going to be something that's going to stick. Notice, they didn't move her over to Google Wave or YouTube or anything else. This is where they're moving her, so it tells me something. And here's an example right off the bat that I wanted to start off sharing with you guys. I searched for the word motorcycle accessories. Notice I'm not typing in Philadelphia or anything else that says I'm looking for a regional search. Yet, after the top three listings, the fourth, fifth, and sixth listing are all Google Places results. You guys have all seen these results, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. All right. Um, if you haven't, then we can talk about that later. Um, this is an advanced session. So, um, you know, those are showing up. So you got to think. If you used to rank well for the word motorcycle accessories and it drove traffic and conversions for you, the day Google decided to start showing more places results, whether they're relevant or not, just took your listings and automatically bumped them down three spots. I think this is really good if you are a local business. If you're a local business, you actually have just had the, the field the, you know, kind of leveled. You can now compete. If you're an aggregator site, this is not good for you. Um, Google is going to show more and more of these local results. If you're in the travel space, you're probably getting hit pretty hard, especially if you're in the hotel space, because these show up for every derivative of the word you know, city plus hotel. So sticking with motorcycles, um, here's an example of me searching for the word motorcycle. That's all I put into my Google search. Google's actually showing, now this I believe is positioned the, the, the second half of the, or the bottom half of the page, but if you notice, there's a Philadelphia cycle, uh, there's Philadelphia used motorcycles, and then there's another Philadelphia seller of motorcycles here. I did not type in the word Philadelphia at all, but yet they're showing me results here. This is a surefire way to do your own, if you're searching for your own rankings, to think that you're ranked higher than you actually are because Google might be doing it based on, on your location. And you can log out of Google to get rid of the personalized search. There's a Firefox plugin you can use um, called unpersonalized search. It's actually a search bar that you, that you can do all your searches unpersonalized, and that does not always get rid of these results. So again, if you do the search um, for coffee, I, was, uh, I had the chance to work with a coffee company, and they wanted to rank well for the word coffee, um, which I think is a bad idea, but that's another story. Um, and what happened when I typed in the word coffee is my local, one of the most popular coffee shops in Philadelphia was showing up on the first page of Google for the word coffee. This is a crazy competitive term. It's hard to rank well for. And all of a sudden, this little coffee shop called La Cologne, which is great coffee. Anybody here from Philly, in Philly regularly? Ever go to, you know, you know La Cologne, of course. So the rest of you guys are missing out. Um, so I saw that, and it started triggering me to go, geez, this is not good. This is not good when Google starts to show the local little coffee shop with five backlinks as one of the top 10 results for the word coffee. So is anybody seeing rankings up or rankings where they typically are, yet your traffic is way down over the last six to eight weeks? If you are, you might want to check out some of the things that are happening with Google to make sure that even though your rankings are staying the same, that the traffic coming from them is lower because Google's now putting these maps and places results all over the place. So that's precisely to me why you have to check more than just your rankings. If you are just using a straight up regular everyday rank checker, it's still going to tell you that you're number one. But if Google's putting a seven pack of map results and then like another three or four local results above that, you think you're number one. You're like number six or seven, and I can only imagine that that's got to hurt your bottom line. But that's why you can't just use rank checkers to check your rankings. Um, my tool of choice is Raven Tools. They also will screen grab the, the, the you know, the, the results at the time that they were picked up. So what's great about that is if you are starting to see, and I'm going to show you how to set up some alerts in Google Analytics to catch these things, you can go back and actually see, well, what did the search result look like that caused these wild fluctuations in my traffic trends? OK, so here we go. In Google Analytics, you guys all have access to, uh, to create uh, intelligence alerts. And what I'm doing here is I'm just saying, you know, so I'm taking a keyword, let's say, right? And I say, uh, you know, and I can actually have, let me start from the top. You name the alert. You can apply it to other profiles if you want. You can do it based on the day, week, or month. You can have it send you an email whenever the, uh, whenever the alert actually triggers. You can have it send other people emails when the alert triggers. Um, this is really good if you've got like a team of people that are working on things and you want to make sure that whenever a certain fluctuation happens, your interns know about it or the managers know about it. This is really smart. Um, and if it's a major catastrophe, you can actually have it sent to your mobile phone via SMS. Or SMS, yeah. OK, so an alert that I like to set up for some of our clients will be when their keyword, and you, can, you have all these options, and you can use regular expressions. Anybody in here really good at regular expressions? 
I'm not, but man, I, can you guys teach me, please? I keep reading these tutorials and I'm not that good at it, but when I see what people can do with regular expressions, it's insane. Um, I don't have this one bookmarked, but recently someone came up with a regular expression that will show you in Google Analytics how many of your keywords are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven word keywords. And what that does is when Google made the change with instant and everybody went, oh my God, what's gonna happen? People are changing their search behavior. You would have a report in Google Analytics that updates every day that actually tells you whether or not instant or other sweeping changes are causing changes in how many words people are actually putting into that box. So back to my example here. I usually use contains to find large groups of keywords. So if you're, a site, if you're working on a bigger site, you can't put in every single keyword in an alert. It would take you too long. But what I might do is say, any keyword that contains the root word that I'm looking for, and I put in my value, I can say alert me when it is less than or greater than by a certain percentage. Um, percentages don't always work if your sample size is really small, because if you go from five visitors to 10, you've doubled but that might not actually be material. So you can choose which ones you want to use, but I feel that with all the changes happening on Google right now, the best way for you to actually know the impact is to do something like this and set up alerts to find out if they're impacting you. So when Google Instant launched, how many of you guys ran around like chickens with your heads cut off going, what's it gonna do? Oh my God, what did this SEO blogger say? And what did Will Reynolds say? And what did this person say? And that person say? And that cuts, that's freaking stupid. You have all the access to your own data. Why don't you look at your own data and figure out how it affects you instead of what I gotta say, because what I might find out could be totally different than what you found out, right? Or what you, what you know to be true. Um, and I'm a quote unquote expert. And I'm saying don't listen to me if you have access to your own data to find out whether or not it's true. Anybody in here a big fan of Compete? Ugh, good. The fewer hands that raise up, the better. I just had a client who emailed me, and we fired this guy um, just a couple weeks ago. He emailed me and said, well, our so-and-so competitor is doing better than us according to Compete. And I said, well, when I look at your traffic and your traffic trend, your traffic goes like this in Google Analytics. Compete has it going like that. So how the heck can you, for a second, put any value in the sites that you are putting in there to see whether or not they're actually doing better than you or not? It's so simple. The data you have there yourselves, it shocks me at how often people rely on outside sources when you have the, your own data there to, uh, to determine whether or not it's actually working. So for citations, um, citations are really big with battling in local search. Citations are simple. I'm going to actually try to skip ahead. So, one of the things that I try to do to get local citations when I'm trying to make sure a client ranks well um, for local related search words is I try to find hyper, hyper local events and we sponsor them. This could be a, this could be a softball team, a t-ball team, it could be a karate team, it could be a, a local club, great place to find this, Meetup. Go to Meetup, you can do a search in Meetup based on location. Find a bunch of places that are all Philly based, look for ones that have external websites because you don't want all your links coming from Meetup. You can sponsor them right through Meetup and get a followed link right, through, right there, but you also want to make sure you're sponsoring them on their sites so that Google starts to see all of these local citations pointing back to your site. So you don't need to have the word Philadelphia and whatever in your anchor text over and over and over again to rank well um, when you're looking at local results. I find citations to be a heck of a lot better way. I also have a tool that I just bookmarked in here that is a local citations finder. So it helps you find local citations based on the keywords that you enter. So um, it's a tool, it's, part of, it's on the pickwheelsbrain.com um, slash pound 11, whatever, you know what it is. All right, the other thing that's really important is tweets get indexed by Google and Bing. We all know that, that's nothing new, right? We also know that we can attach our geographic location to tweets, right? Nothing new. But strategically, if you're trying to get local citations and people are tweeting about a word camp, so think about these camps. Anybody going to a word camp or a bar camp or one of these thousand camps? When you go to them, they're usually kind of local, and they're usually people that are like crazy social media folks. So they're updating their status, telling Twitter where they are at that time, and Google indexes all that information. Think about it. You sponsor a hyper-local event, and a bunch of people all start tweeting about that event from within that location. You are sending very strong signals to Google that you are locally relevant for, for certain keywords. This can even help you if your site is not entirely local. So I actually found a site that built a directory, and their directory is actually ranking almost as if it was a local result. If I, I, I don't have time to go back to it, but if you remember the, the motorcycle example, there was like a classified site that had ranked there, but yet Google was looking at that as a Philadelphia site. It's probably because there's enough citations there for Google to actually think it's relevant for people in Philly. 
So I've already asked this question, so I'm going to keep going. To battle with this, if you're an aggregator, it all begins with keyword strategy. And people are like, keywords again? Yeah, keywords again. Keywords, keywords, keywords. So what I tend to find and what I'm going to show you guys is using modifiers like best review, top 10, buying guide, best X for this or that or the other, typically does not bring up a lot of these local results that are boxing you out. So Orlando Hotels, <laughs> as affiliates, who would not love to rank on the first page of Google for this keyword, right? Um, the problem is that when you look at the results, it actually is really difficult to rank well. So you've got your people who are willing to spend tons of money up at the top. Uh, then you've got your seven pack of results that have the phone number there, the reviews there, all the things that we actually want when we're trying to figure out whether or not we're going to stay in a hotel. Then you've got some uh, modifiers there on how you can change your search, which is a great signal to the modifiers that people use when they search for Orlando hotels. And then I drew arrows next to all of the big brands that we all know and love or not love. And, uh, and they're all kind of on the first page of results. So again, you got to think, you've got limited real estate here to battle. Who here wants to try to battle with orbits? I mean, I don't. Um, I want to go where they're not. So what I would recommend for people that are finding this uh, happening for them, where these local results and universal results are starting to push them out, shift your focus to things like this. And I'm just using straight up Google Suggest here. This is one of the times where if you are logged in to your Google account, it will show you personalized results. So you want to be careful not to think that a word is really important just because you searched for it. And I know we are all each the center of our own universe. But if it actually comes time to do keyword research, you don't want to rank well for words that only you're typing in. The other thing that happens here is your location definitely impacts what shows up here from time to time. But look at all the different ways that people are searching for Orlando hotels. And let's look at what the results look like. Looks wildly different, right? Where's my seven pack? Gone. Where are my modifiers? Gone. Um, the map? Gone. All those reviews with phone numbers and things that people love to look at? Gone. This is where I would start to battle if I was an affiliate. I would try to use keyword research to find pockets that are still ripe for opportunity where there's not a crap ton of huge brands. I mean, you're always going to have TripAdvisor there, um, but there's not going to be a ton of huge brands there that you might actually have a chance of pushing out. Let's keep going on this theme. So Orlando Hotels for Families. Remember, in the drop down, we saw that people are searching for it. I'm not making this up. People are searching for that. Again, of course, we got TripAdvisor. We got About.com. We got some big sites there, but there's still content sites, which means you can compete on content. This is not, Google's not showing yet Orlando Hotels for Families as the seven pack or the map of results, which just pushes your stuff down and makes it harder for you to make money. And you can keep going through this and through this, but hopefully you guys get the idea. Now, Orlando, it's tough. I know it's a major travel destination, but if you think about this in general terms, you should be doing this kind of re keyword research. If you're finding that the alerts you set up are starting to tell you that your rankings are staying the same, but your traffic is starting to trend down, your conversions are starting to trend down, your affiliate revenue is starting to trend down, you should start looking for where Google is no longer showing those kind of results so that you've got a window of opportunity to battle. Recommendations was another one. So I wanted to show you guys an example that wasn't Orlando Hotel 4. You know, this is recommendations. It could be top 10 Orlando hotels, whatever it might be. I think you guys totally get this, right? So the other thing to remember is people use more keywords in searches than they ever have. Um, here's, the, here's the proof coming from uh, Hitwise. Look at it. I mean, it'll take two seconds. Take it all in. Ah, good, done. All right. People are searching for more keywords. So stop doing the, like, I got to rank for the word coffee. Like, stop it. Like, it's only going to have a diminishing return for you. So you're going to invest all this money, whether it's a search company or you're doing it yourself or whatever, time, whatever it is. You're going to invest all this time to rank for a keyword that you know people are just inherently searching for less and less and less. An example I always give is the word shopping. When you, when you look at the word shopping on, uh, as a keyword, I tried to rank well for the word shopping back in like 98, 99. Why? Because nobody knew where the freak to go shopping on the internet. So shopping was a great keyword. Today, if you rank well for the word shopping, you're probably not going to do very well. All right, so let's show you some other tools to find these types of opportunities. Um, is anyone in here uh, blogging or have a site that mostly deals with current events? Anybody like celebrity blog, something like that? Okay, so for your current events folks, there's new suggest for Google Suggest. So don't just go into Google Suggest and look for things. You can use Google News has suggest. So unfortunately, Michael Vick did not come through yesterday. Um, I'm sad about this and I threw some things. Um, but I'm okay now. 
Uh, but you know, if you're doing keyword research in a space that's a pop culture area, you want to know what people are, are, are searching for. And I think news can sometimes give you better, uh, a better result set than just using regular old Google Suggest. And I'm going to show you the difference with that in a second. Anybody here blog about product? Pro product bloggers? Cool. All right. So product suggest is another one. A lot of people don't even know you can use Google Suggest for products. The left-hand side is the regular Google Suggest. The right-hand side is Google Product Suggest. Yes, there is overlap. Do you see how when I screen cap this, how Running Shoes Philadelphia and Wilmington, Delaware show up? It's a prime example of what happens when you're logged in. Now, I know that, but you don't want to think that, wow, there's more people searching for Running Shoes Philadelphia than New York or California or a bigger, or a bigger city um, or you know, San Fran, Los Angeles. It's because I'm logged in. So that's a good example to show you guys what happens when you do that. But on the product suggest side, it's going to give you more options. And if people are in the product side, I feel like they're a lot closer to purchase. So I kind of sort of like targeting the keywords that product suggest is showing me. Now, I don't have this link um, in my link. So this one you might want to write down. There is a tool called Scrapebox, which um, I can't take credit for. Marty Weintraub was the first person that talked about it, and I was really impressed. And he actually uses it to scrape the suggest. Because you guys got to think, it's very time consuming to go through and use all these different suggest tools and type in words one at a time, right? What if you had a tool that you just typed in the words and then it just went in and grabbed them all every time over and over again? Dump your set of keywords in a scrape box, it goes and pulls them all out across news, product, um, suggest, YouTube, Amazon, all of them. It's hard as heck to figure out. I'm still trying to figure out all the, all the functionalities. So one of the things is, I always go back to this example, is today if you search for running shoes, Nine out of 10, at least when I did the search, results were brands that we would all recognize. That is a problem. How many people in here actually are doing SEO on a site for a brand that everyone in here would recognize? Not many, right? It's about three out of a pretty freaking large group of people. So most of us are all in the same boat. If you're not one of the large brands, you want to go where the brands aren't showing up. And I'll tell you that Google's brand bias has just gotten worse year over year. So what I did is I tried to search for the word running shoes for flat feet. It was one of the terms that came back and suggest. I dropped it in. The only brand that showed up that we would recognize there was Asics. Now, there were some like running magazines there um, as well. But again, the only brand you're going to compete with is Asics. So if Google is showing a brand bias, I just want to reiterate this. It's so important for you to go in the areas where you can actually have a chance to compete. I'm telling you, with these big brands, you might work your tail off on building links and doing all these things right, and you may still have no chance of ranking well because of Google's brand bias right now. Here's another tool you can use. Um, it's a lot easier to use in Scrapebox, and it's free. Um, I got this one already bookmarked in my list, so you can just um, go to there and download it from there. Um, but what it does is it'll give you all the different extended search results that come out of Suggest. Uh, that you would see in Google Suggest, but you don't have to sit in there and type in running shoes and the letter A and the letter B and the letter C to get all the different words that people are searching for to find this opportunity. You can just do that. Drop it in, and if you're real smart, I'm thinking of this one on the fly, but if you're real smart, what you can do is take this whole keyword list, drop it into your rank checker, and just let it index one page or all the pages that are ranking for these words, right? And then you can actually look at the Google results and say, is Google showing results that have all the big brands in there, yes or no, and then you just decide not to go after them. So then you're not doing all these manual searches. You've got to find a way to work smarter, not harder, right? And by the way, I don't believe in the four-hour work week. If I found a way to do my job in four hours, I'd find a way to put in 50 more hours to just get even better at it. So um, I think that you want to work as smart as you possibly can, and these are ways that you can cut down your time on data aggregation and spend more time strategically trying to figure out how to do fun things, like build links. Another example is Suval. Anybody here using Suval? Okay, so Suval um, actually will do suggest on not just these sites, but there's a couple of others. So what happens is when you type in a search result in Suval, it looks like this. So it'll show you different, um, all the different sites, and you can kind of see their little uh, logos behind there. And then it's actually got a pretty neat drag and drop interface for you to start to create your keyword groups and your keyword list. But again, this is about working smarter. You could go out to Google and Bing and you know, Google product search and YouTube and Amazon and Wiki Answers and all these places, or you could just drop it into Suval and have it automatically show you all the different derivatives that people are searching for. Okay, so I can imagine that some people right now are like, you know, we'll spend a lot of time on keywords. It's true, I am. So you can now wake up, all right? You gotta remember though, keyword research, if you're saying, well, keyword research is boring, 
you know, link building is sexy. You know, if you're one of those people that just like obsesses about link building, I got something for you. Think for a second, okay? Get your brain back in and then think. If you build links and target the wrong keywords, then you're going to end up getting outranked by these guys and not earning a dime anyway. I hate people that love to link build because usually they don't spend any time on keyword research. And then they go, well, I built all these links. And it's like, well, are you actually ranking for keywords that anybody cares about? Or are you competing with brands that you're never going to beat anyway? That's why before we got into the ultra sexy link building stuff, I wanted to at least build an advanced foundation on making sure that you get the right keywords. Because I'm not doing you a service by showing you how to build these awesome links if you end up targeting the wrong keywords. Can we agree to that? Cool. So wake up now. It's time to get started. Um, you got to remember, Google's doing, they're ranking all this other stuff in the top 10, and they're doing it more and more and more. And that is definitely a threat to you. So now that you're like, oh, yeah, well, I get it. So now you can get this t-shirt, right? You can get the I am so smart t-shirt because we've all realized that keywords are always the foundation of any good SEO campaign, and then we can do link building. So let's get into this stuff. Any questions so far on anything before I start doing rapid fire link building fun stuff? All right, let's keep rolling. So I think this year, I think, and this is a big bet, the biggest bet that I ever had that was wrong was um, how long exact match domains would continue to rank well. About four or five years ago, I'm like, that's got to stop. Every time I search for a keyword, it's always like the exact match domain flies up to the top. And I was wrong. So I could be wrong on this one. Um, but I feel that this year, Google's going to start smacking down people that have unnatural link backlink profiles. And Google Webmaster Tools is your first warning sign. How many of you have seen unnatural link building profile notifications in your Google Webmaster Tools? How many of you know that that exists? No one. All right, cool. I love giving people new shit. All right, so um, this is what an unnatural link building warning looks like. It comes straight out of, out of Google Webmaster Tools. So right now, Google Webmaster Tools has just launched two new alerts that will show up in your Webmaster Tools. So if you're online right now and you're like tweeting or you're not paying attention to me, you better at least go into Google Webmaster Tools and make sure that you're not getting one of these uh, notifications. Um, with Google Webmaster Tools and this alert, not only are they telling you that your link building is unnatural, and I know all the smart people in here are going, well, does that mean I can just build a bunch of links to my competitor and then make them all like scared and all that? Take your black hat, hat off for a second. Um, that might actually happen, yes. And John Muller, who's kind of like the number two guy behind Matt Cutts, he actually said in a Google Webmaster forum that 99% of the time, that will not work. But he did admit that on very, very rare occasions, that kind of strategy actually could work. They're also doing a cloaking warning. So anybody here doing an A-B test, you, hopefully you are. If you're running A-B tests, it's one of the surefire ways to, um, I was sharing this with a friend who I hope is, he said he would be here, and I don't see him, there's a lot of people here. Um, but he was sharing with me how they were running an A-B test, and Google thought they were cloaking. Slammed them, gave them a smackdown, right? And because most of us don't have Matt Cuts on speed dial, you know, doesn't answer my emails all the time either, uh, I wish he did. Uh, you know, sometimes you're just at the mercy of Google while you're getting penalized. So that's another reason why you want to log into your webmaster tools, because not only are they showing unnatural backlink profiles, they're also telling you if they think that you're doing cloaking, which I think is huge. All right, so if you've got an unnatural backlink profile, Majestic Tools is one of my favorite places to get a very quick snapshot. This is not in-depth yet. We're going to get to that. But for, if you want a quick snapshot, you can drop in, uh, if you create an account, which I think, which is free, I think you can put in six, up to six websites. And then it will show you their link, their, their link patterns, their trajectory. Now, there's a couple of settings here you need to know about when you're using this tool. I prefer cumulative over monthly. Because monthly, you'll see these really weird spikes. It's really hard to discern what it actually means. Usually the spikes very often will occur when people get site-wides. So if you see a lot of your competitors with spikes like that, it usually means that they suddenly got a bunch of links on one site, maybe to the tune of 10 or 15,000 links on a site. But when you put in yourself versus your competitors, like I did at the bottom here, you can kind of see your trajectory over time on how you're building links. I always say, never be on the fringes. You always want to be somewhere in the middle. And that's a free tool. So here's something that I've been working on for about a year and, oh, uh, no, probably about, probably about, a, about a year. Um, and it's taking data from multiple sources, mostly Open Site Explorer, it's hands down one of the better tools out there from SEO Moz, and I bring it all into a spreadsheet, right? Then I use conditional formatting to color all of these factors that I bring in. I personally bring in about 80 factors per 
per result set. But for you, start with five. And make one of them, please, not page rank. So old school. Um, so find five or 10 factors, drop them into a spreadsheet, right? Export them from the different tools you use, and then conditionally format them and put your site at the bottom, right? If you are at a higher range than everybody else you're trying to compete with on something like anchor text or site-wide links, or if you're lower than everybody else on like domain authority, that's going to tell you something. I always say try to be somewhere in the middle so that especially if you're link building, you don't end up getting smacked with an unnatural backlink profile. All this requires you to do, go to Google, take the top 10 people or top 20 or so, drop them all in, build an average, and then make sure that you're kind of staying somewhere in those ranges so you don't end up spiking one day and having that be a problem. I'll give you guys an example. We had a client in the logo design space, wicked competitive, and this person was moving. They were moving well. We were building a ton of anchor text backlinks for them through a lot of like widgets and things like that. And we ended up having about 20% of our keywords having the anchor text, so of all, of all their links rather. So of all their links, 20% of the links said logo design, right? They were still ranking very, very well and are on their way to doing well. But when I compared them to everyone else, the, the next highest person had 2% of their backlinks using the word logo design. So what did that tell me? I gotta go build some regular links. I gotta go build some, some links with their logo. I gotta do some press releases, something that's gonna get syndicated and use no keywords in them. Get all the links to say www.theirdomain.com because that's more natural, right? So that's one of the ways that you wanna make sure you're not building um, an unnatural profile in 2011. What I love about this spreadsheet is you can build a lot of macros on, in Excel. So if you're good with macros, once you bring this in, we have one macro that not only color codes the whole thing and sorts all the columns, it also automatically pops out anything that's unnatural, automatically. And if you, you know, get a book, read it. Um, I don't have an affiliate link or I'd give you one. Um, but go to Amazon, buy a book, learn macros if you're gonna bring things into Excel. I'm much more of a fan of APIs. So if anybody here's a programmer, do this stuff in APIs, it'll work a heck of a lot better and it'll scale a heck of a lot better. So here's another example. I'm zoomed in on an example of exactly what I was just talking about. So I took out all the um, incriminating information, but I took the top 10 for a keyword that we're not in the top 10 for. And I looked at the number of links where that these people have where they've got the exact match anchor text, not phrase, exact, right? And I wanted to benchmark that and to see how many they, they are. And then I was gonna drop in our site and see how we compare just to make sure we're in the range. This is also a surefire way to find out that you're getting your butt kicked. Um, another thing that I use Majestic tools for is to see if other people are building links at a faster rate than I am. Because you might be building 10, 20 links a month and you're doing a really good job, but what if other people out there are just outpacing you and they're building 40 or 50? Odds are you're probably not going to catch up. So, this will help you, if you're trying to diversify your link building profile, you know, you want to look at link growth over time, you want to look at anchor text, how many of the links that you have have your brand in them versus everyone else. You want to make sure that you look like everyone else. Do not stand out and raise your hand and go, hey, Matt Cutts over here. Yeah, me, I'm the guy with like five times more anchor text than everybody else and I'm in the top 10 or on my way there. Because once you step out as an unnatural backlink profile, it's probably going to start causing you some problems. So one of my favorite tools to um, help diversify is a tool called Zamanta. Um, anybody here that's a blogger might have heard of them. Anybody heard of Zamanta? Anybody here from Zamanta? Oh, okay. Um, but what, what's great about Zamanta is if you have uh, like a blog or any like data feed, it's your own unique content, please people don't put on the black hat hat and start being like, well, wow, I can scrape all kinds of people's stuff and don't do that, okay? Don't do that, be good. Um, but what it does is that it'll take your content, and automatically match it to bloggers who are talking about the same topic that you're talking about, okay? And it's not overly expensive, it does cost money, um, but what they're doing is when I'm a blogger and I'm writing about a certain topic, it'll say, hey, there's a YouTube video that you might wanna include in your, in your post based on what you're writing about. Hey, there's, a, there's content over here you might wanna include in your post. There's a Wikipedia page you might wanna include, so they're actually adding value to help you create more resources on your page. But if you work with them, you're in their network, you will become one of the people that is recommended when everything kind of matches up. The beauty is, is those are never, ever, ever using anchor text. So it's a great way to quickly diversify yourself if you've got a large content bank. And I'm, I'm definitely a fan um, so far for the clients that we've been testing it with. Okay, so another thing that I like, that I was adding like literally 10 minutes before I started, um, is I use this notes tool in Chrome. Anybody here use uh, the sticky notes tool in Chrome? 
Anybody Chrome? Okay, good. Oh, okay, nice. There's one. Because um, I work really fast when I link build. I mean, I'm looking for large lists, and I'm just like, click, open tab, click, 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 click. And I'm doing it over and over and over again. So one of the things that I hate is when I got to copy a URL out of Google, paste it into some freaking spreadsheet or some Word doc, write in my notes, and then back and forth. What this does is um, what you can do is you can add a note in to, right from Google Chrome. So while I'm in Chrome, there's a little uh, link at the top. It's a plugin. You click it, you write in a note. Then every time you visit that site, those notes automatically show up. I love that because how many times are we doing keyword research, not keyword research, link building, and we're working so fast that you know, you're like, oh, I think it was at this site, but what page was it on the site that I liked or what was it about this site that I thought was an opportunity? Uh, are they an advertiser? Are they not an advertiser? Where do they link to that stuff? If you do this, as soon as you hit that page again, you're automatically going to be reminded of the notes for, that you took for that page. And it sits right there in Chrome. It's crazy. Um, it's, it's obviously cheap. It's free. Um, but it's crazy fast. It's really helped me speed up my link building time. So, uh, oh, uh, note anywhere, I think is what it's called. It's in the links that I gave out earlier. Uh, well, my one link that has links to all of these links, it's there. All right. Um, so, uh, one of the things that people don't do enough of is looking at, people always look at their competitors and like compete, like stop that. Like there's a lot of other things if you want to look at your competitors you should look for. And one of my favorites is using PostRank. Anybody here using PostRank to spawn their competitors? Okay, you should. Um, what I love about PostRank is when you drop in um, someone's blog, uh, it doesn't have to be a blog. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a blog. So it can be any content. It will automatically pop up for you their good, better, and best posts based on their own algorithm. But what I love about it is when you put your mouse over one of the little numbers that they pop up, it will tell you how many times that thing has been bookmarked, how many comments it has, how many times it's been uh, tweeted, retweeted. All that information sits right there. And this is totally free. This is what it looks like. Um, so when I dropped in, I was doing some keyword research in a, uh, for a client trying to come up with some new content. And we wanted to develop content, but instead of us just going, well, this sounds kind of cool, let's do that. Instead, I started dropping in competitors' blogs. So here I used autoblog. Under show, which I apologize, I should have included the drop down. It shows good, better, and best. And then the number there to the left, when you mouse over it, I can look at this and tell, who uses bright kite still? But there's one bright kite mention, um, 20 comments on that thread. Uh, I think the one is something to deal with Google, friend feed. Um, then I can tell that one person on Facebook liked it and they got 45 tweets. This allows you very quickly to look at what content have my competitors written that has actually caught on. Now, I've got a whole other session that, I've, that I did a while back on once you find this, how to actually go about contacting somebody and finding opportunities to build links. This is really good if what your competitors have that's gotten a lot of social traction is old or out of date. So if it's from 2008 and it's got all these mentions, it's a great time to redo it as the 2010 or 2011 version and then go back and contact all the people who left comments in that thread and let them know that what they're linking to or talking to is out of date and that you've got a new source. Totally white hat, like nothing like crazy, sketchy or shady there, but it just makes sense. So if, it's, if somebody has an old piece of content, why wouldn't you, that's caught on and now you've got social proof that it has caught on and it's worth your time to redevelop it, you redevelop it and post it. Um, and then you go back and contact everybody that linked to it, everybody that commented on it and left their, uh, left their website. That's the way you build links, in my opinion. So this is tough to do if you've got tons and tons of competitors to do this all day. Um, and I'm not a fan of hiring interns. Um, not because I don't like them, because I'd rather automate them. So I'm an API junkie. PostRank, it's expensive, but they have an API, which will allow you to drop in thousands of websites at a time and have this whole process automatically run for you. So that now you can drop them all in and go, all right, now I can look at all my competitors. I can see what they've all written about that's gotten hot. That's a great place to start building your content. Wouldn't you agree? The other thing that I love, so it's really hard for me. Um, and I, I actually, contrary to popular belief, people think I run this company. I just sit there and like, you know, do these sessions and crap like that. I actually do SEO every single day. Um, that's why I got into the business. I didn't get in the business to run a business. I got into business because I freaking love SEO. So I have a, a wine client who we're working with. And it's really hard to stay on top of their space. There's so many wine bloggers out there that it's really hard. So what did I do? I took, um, so PostRank has a plugin for Google Reader. And then anytime I load up my reader, I literally have like 600 messages about wine. 
Mind you, I don't really mind that, but I got a job to do, right? So what it does is it scores them all right here and lets me know which ones have gotten the most popularity. So now if I'm trying to stay on top of a client's space and what's getting hot in their space, I can now try to, in the best that I can, stay on top of 20 or 30 or 40 blogs without actually having to read every update and look to see whether or not it's gotten hot. PostRank in my Google Reader is automatically going to tell me what's gotten hot so that I know to focus my time there instead of spending so much of my time going through a bunch of sites that are actually lowly rated. Anybody doing this? Anybody using PostRank for a Google Reader? Cool. It's even a good way that when you're like really far behind, so I got a question all you guys are going to say yes to. How many of you are behind on the things you should be reading to stay on top of your industry? There we go. I've been waiting for something I can get a lot of hands on. Um, this is a great way that when you're really far behind, you go, well, let me at least read the stuff. Because, you know, we all click that read all button. You feel really bad doing it because you know there's something in there you should know. You just don't know what it is. And you just go, oh, oh shit. Read all. Done. Whew. Done today, right? But you know you're missing stuff. This is a great way, even if you follow SEO people like I do, sometimes it's just too much. I cannot stay on top of all of it. So when I'm really far behind, I'll use this tool to be my proxy. So 2011 is the year I believe that the social graph will finally start to impact the link graph. I mean, you got to remember, Google had a Google social search, social search thank you, um, come out, I want to say it was October 2008, 2009. Um, so it's been around for a while. They haven't really figured it out too well. But I think they, I know they will. They're a lot smarter than I am. So the other thing is, you know, Bing and Facebook are now integrated. So, you know, when your friends like something that's local in this instance, you're going to know that. Um, depending on where I give this presentation, some people think that's really creepy. I don't think so. If, if I visit your city, odds are I'm not going to call you guys up. And there's a lot of you here that are friends of mine. I might not even know where you live, because we're just friends on Facebook or on Twitter. I know you as your handle. I really don't know you by name, unfortunately, right? Because we've always done these electronic communications. But if I'm visiting your town and I'm typing in Chicago steakhouses and you're automatically recommending stuff for me, I think that's pretty helpful. I don't think that's creepy. Um, but your mileage may vary on the creepy versus helpful debate. Feel free to have it. It won't help you rank well, so don't engage in it. All right. Well, the only reason why I say that is because I watch the debates that people have in SEO, and it's shocking how much time people spend staying on top of who doesn't like who, and who's doing this, and black hat, this, that, and the other. It's like, stop the crap, dude. Like, is anything ever going to help you to actually get ranked higher? No. So like, why are you caring about two people arguing back and forth in a comment about who's black hat or who's ethical and who's not? Stop that crap. All right, so eight search and social takeaways for you guys. Um, I would say don't invest more than 5% of your time on it because it's not impacting the search results that heavily right now. Google will figure it out. Again, guys, if you set up your alerts in Google Analytics, which I mentioned earlier, you will automatically be notified when this starts to have an impact. Set up, the pro, set up the alert and just sit back and let it tell you. Heck, if you're really nervous about it, set it up to send you a text message. So right now, the same old tactics, link building and all that always work, so keep doing it. I think building a loyal following on Twitter and, and Facebook and other social media is going to become an asset for you. Because eventually the search engines are going to figure out how to leverage that to help you rank better. They don't have it figured out yet. But it's going to be an asset. Now, of course, it's an asset for many reasons other than SEO, but I don't know a lot of things other than SEO, so that's all I'm here to talk to you guys about. Um, when you're, you know, I think asking for people to follow you, I, so if you're a friend of mine and you ever ask me to retweet your stuff, I might actually do it, but deep down I'm gritting my teeth and I freaking hate your guts. So my, my, think, my thinking is if you write something of value consistently, I'm naturally going to see it and retweet it. If you're not writing things of value, then I'd much rather not have you go, hey, can you retweet this crap that you don't really like to your followers, who are then probably also going to read it and be like, wow, that's crap. Don't do that stuff. You know, actually build stuff that people care about. And the easy way to do it is I've shown you the keyword research tools and the plugins and all the cool stuff you can do to actually know that people care about what you're writing about. Um, as you know, Google and Bing are going to figure out how to see manipulation in the social graph. So you know, try to do it all above board. Um, I've always told people, just start following folks and interacting with people, actually interacting with people. Not like, hey, I'm always putting something out there that's about me and how cool I am, how awesome I am, how big my check was this month. Like, nobody really cares about that, and nobody really wants to retweet that crap. I mean, they might tell you, wow, you're awesome, but wow, you're awesome has never put a dollar in my bank account. Um, so like, don't get in at all that stupid part about social, in my opinion. 
Um, I've already told you about the keyword research. And last thing is Google's kind of talked about this a little bit. And it's going to kind of be like page rank for people. You know, they're going to be able to see the link graph or the social graph the same way they see the link graph. People selling things, people being manipulative. They say they're going to figure it out. I hope to God they do. And I think the one free tool you got to use to compete, if you're not using Open Site Explorer, I feel sorry for you. It's free, and there's so much information there that to not use it is crazy. Um, and then you think about it. You can export out of Excel, so you can do very nice things in Excel and really help this data work for you. Or you can use their API, which is paid, to actually really start to make something happen. For instance, um, I was doing some reverse engineering on, a, I'm a Jeep guy, I, I, I love Jeeps, I have an old 88 Wrangler with a big set of 33s on it and a winch, you would not expect that from this guy, but I am. So, um, I was doing some reverse engineering on Quadratech, who's a local company um, in the Philadelphia area who, who has a lot of Jeep products, Jeep parts and things like that. So what I do is by dropping them in an open site explorer, I'm able to see something here. What I liked is I was able to see that they were, how they were getting links to their uh, Cherokee parts page, I believe that first one is. Um, yeah, that's what it is. So I found that they got 12 root domains linking with, that was the exact match anchor text for Jeep Cherokee parts. So if I'm trying to figure out how to compete with them, not that I am, um, but if I was, that's one of the things that I would do. The other thing I loved was that it showed me this rock crawl team, which had seven uh, different domains linking directly to it. So then I started to dig in. These guys are actually testing product out there, um, you know, day to day. And when I look at this, one, I see the shopping spray, which is like, wow, I hope you're using that for contest sites, because obviously you can get links that way. But I think it's also a great way to connect with people. So again, I think this is a great asset. It's, you know, you're going to get links within your community, which is obviously going to be relevant. It allows for you to actually do something somewhat social, bring people in, have them come on site when you're testing things. Think about the contest you could run. Win a day with the Quadratech team if you talk about that on your blog and link to us. Link building, easy, right? Take real legitimate assets and find ways to build links on them. So I'm starting to wrap up here uh, so then I can take time for questions. But how many people here, you gotta be, some people have to be using video to promote their sites, right? Okay, cool. I'm not really that good at video SEO. I'm trying to learn a lot about it, but I got one or two people in the back end that are training me a lot about it. And it's, it's actually very, very powerful. And it's actually, from what I hear, easy to manipulate. Um, but not that you should do that. So um, find sites that embed your videos and then contact those sites. I got a pretty, um, I got, I have a pretty decent YouTube channel and people embed those videos like crazy. I can go, unfortunately like 80% of them are scrapers, but I can go in and then take, uh, look at who's embedded my, my, uh, my video, I thank them, and then I talk about doing something with them, a guest post or something like that, and it always works like a charm. And here's an example. Um, and if you have YouTube videos, you can see this. Who's embedding your stuff? Um, how many views are they getting from those embed sources? Another thing you can do, let me actually skip ahead because I know we're getting a little bit low. With YouTube Suggest, it's the same thing like Google Suggest. So if you're going to produce a video, go here and make sure somebody's actually searching for it before you spend all that time recording yourself and finding out that nobody gives a shit. Like it happens so much when people produce content. It shocks me that when people create content, they go, that sounds cool to me, it's going to be awesome, high five, pay somebody in India like 20 cents to write the whole thing, usually not going to take off, usually. Um, and then you put it out there and nobody cares about it because you're not doing basic keyword research before you start. So I'm sorry I brought it back to the very unsexy keyword research. But then something else that a lot of people don't know is that you can turn off giving all of your video data to the world. And a lot of people don't do it. So I tried traveling with kids or traveling with baby or whatever the word I use because I saw it come up and suggest back here, traveling with baby. Found this site and they actually let you see all their, all their data about the video. Sweet, thank you. And here it is. I can see all the places that, uh, you know, different like milestones of the video. When those milestones occurred, how many views have come from those milestones. Great place to look for partnerships. Great place to look for somebody to promote your stuff. If you've seen them promote somebody else's stuff and their promotion got that video a lot of views. Does that make sense? It's a great way to find partners. Then you can also see like demographic information on people that are viewing it and where they're viewing it. Not so, not so important. Um, I'm going to skip that. There we go. Cool. That's the end of it. So people that have questions, by all means, um, ask away, and I will try my best to answer. Uh, you have to hand up first there. Uh, do you normally, on YouTube, when you post videos, do you turn off that so people can see The question is, uh, is, do I typically turn that off when I post my videos? Um, I, I'm, <laughs> watch. Somebody make a liar out of me, please, and go check it. I'm pretty sure that I have that turned off, and it's an account level setting to where you do it one time, and it turns it off across the entire account. Is it, because sometimes I see it, there's more views, people want to view. 
Oh, you can still see the number of views. You can't see all the people that are linking to my stuff. That's why I don't want you seeing it if you're producing SEO videos. Right? Cool. Uh, uh, hand over there. The question revolves around, given the prevalence of local, um, if I see value in building like comments on like local like newspaper sites. Okay, um, my gut says no. That, um, well for local, yes. For local, it, it might. The problem is with like the Philly Inquirer, like a lot of news sites that totally haven't gotten this whole internet thing, they make you log in and then they put it through some kind of stupid tracking script and then they want to put their like frame around it. So God forbid you go to somebody else's site with all their crap plastered all over it. So a lot of times, even when you're on those sites, it doesn't take you further off. But I think that's worth testing. I think you're onto something there that may be commenting on, I would prefer to do it more on local blog sites and local forums that are built for SEO versus these god awful platforms that these newspapers are on that they can't even figure out how to change an image without having to ask 20 people to do it, right? So I would probably do the flip and do it with blogs that are local and forums that are local because inherently they're built to be very search friendly, which means a lot of your links are going to be found and that's the approach that I would probably take. Cool. Question here? Oh. I think you're absolutely right. So the question is, uh, you know, with reciprocal linking, if I've got a site that is a natural fit for another site, and then they link to me and I link to them, their team was concerned about, well, ooh, we shouldn't do that because it's reciprocal linking. Those are people that are probably still using like the keywords meta tag and think it's ranking well. Like anybody who's not linking to somebody reciprocally right now because you're scared of like, oh, what's that gonna do and is Google gonna not like my site? You're crazy. That means you're really not reading about what's going on in this space. Um, and I hate to be that blunt about it, but it's true. Reciprocal links are not gonna hurt you. There are so many times where reciprocal links just make sense. And to try to manipulate people to link to them and then have them link off to some other site so you're not doing the reciprocal link, that's just stupid in my opinion. Focus on a lot of other things. So I would be with you 100%. If it makes sense and it's not, and I would be careful with like the anchor text I use, don't get too aggressive. But if it makes sense, yeah, I, I'll reciprocal link with anybody. I'll link out to anybody here if they've got content that I actually find is worth worth linking out to. So yeah, absolutely, and if they're already linking to me, great, but if not, it's no big deal. Sure, no, no, no problem, question. Can you show the first slide again that shows the link? Yes, there's 104 slides. Sorry about that. You guys didn't realize that, did you? Uh, where is it, there it is. That's the URL that's got the links, that's got all the links that I talked about today for anybody who didn't get it. Um, one second, does anybody else have a question before I go back to somebody for a second one? Okay. Oh, there's one there. Do I think that Google's going to extend the local bias even further than they are now? I don't think they can extend it much more than they are already now. I mean, when I search for the word coffee, why am I, I'm searching for coffee. I'm not searching for a Philadelphia coffee shop. Why am I seeing in natural search results, not as places or map results, two or three local coffee shops. Um, maybe that's where Google will start to use personalized search to, know, to kind of get an idea of what I'm searching for and what I'm looking for and serve me up results accordingly. But I think, I think they can't make it, I think if anything, you're gonna see it curled back a bit. You know, if I type in motorcycle accessories, I'm probably looking for them all over. I'm not just looking for ones that are in, in Philadelphia, potentially. So I think they've ratcheted it up way high and they're gonna, those smart guys are going to figure out after they get a bunch of data in whether or not it's ultimately helping them sell more ads, ad sets. Yeah, or AdWords. How important is the speed of sight? The question is, is how important is speed of sight? Was that the only part? It sounded like I might have cut you off. Okay, so um, I get that question a lot. Um, and from my experience, it's not very important. Um, so this is another instance where, you know, Google fires a bow across the ship, you know, hey, Speed of site, we got all this stuff in your Google Webmaster Tools, if your site's slow, it's a factor. I think it's a very, 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 very small factor because there's a lot of great websites 
out there that load slow. And slow on the internet is like point how many seconds? You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I'm not a big believer that that would cause you to get out of the index. We had a client who had a very popular uh, gossip blog. And the pages were taking forever to load. And you could see the load time in Google just spiked when they moved to a new platform. And obviously, since we had that, we looked at their rankings, benchmarked the day before the day after uh, that launch happened when the site started loading really slow, zero impact on their, on their results overall. It's not a good thing to have a slow loading site for a ton of reasons, but I don't think it's going to hurt your SEO rankings. And it's not the, anything that I've seen across probably about, I would say probably since that uh, announcement came out, we've probably worked with at least like 50 to 100 you know, different folks, and uh, I haven't seen it affect any of them. Okay. Any other questions before we wrap up? One here? So the question there is, uh, revolves around um, dynamic content that always changes, and do I need like a block of like static content? Um, and my answer to that is always yes. Uh, because what's, what will happen, guys, is if you're constantly rotating content, then your rankings are gonna do this. Oh, today you're talking about this celebrity, but then you rotate it off, put it in the archives, so then tomorrow you're not. So you're gonna find the rankings for Angelina Jolie doing this, because when you talk about her and put her on the first page, for three, four days, and Google happens to catch it at that time, she spikes. But then once you put it into the archive, she goes away. So then your rankings are gonna fluctuate a lot. So I like having a static block of content that regardless of how much something else rotates through, that is what's causing it to rank well for the, for the long haul. Yeah, exactly, that's, that's how I would approach that. Anyone else, questions in the back? Anyone? There's one there, yes. Pretty close. Uh, the question is, is um, with rankings, uh, if is it like an 80-20 rule? Almost where like 20% of it is, okay, uh, we're almost up on time. So that'll be my last question. Um, but uh, you know, how much of it's on-site versus off-site? And I've, I've always said it in my gut. I did no research. My gut, I've always said it's like 70-30. 70% 70 70 of uh, what causes you to rank well comes from the links you build, and 30% of it comes from on-site factors, the foundation you build. But what's really important, guys, is I know that building a good foundation ain't as sexy as building links and all that fun stuff. But if you don't build the right foundation, then if Google can't easily get your pages, all the links in the world are not gonna matter. So it's still very important that you pay attention to that 20%. And with that said, um, I'll be around for a while, so feel free to ask me any questions. And uh, I'm gonna be at some suite upstairs for a half hour doing a Q&A later today. So feel free to bring your sites on up. I'll tweet out where that is, because I don't have that information yet. But the minute I do, I'll share it with you. Bring yourself one up and we can actually talk about your individual sites. Thanks so much, guys.